Evening, it's Pastor Trish. I think I looked earlier today. I think we're on like week 32, I think, of being together, something like that. That sounds about right, doesn't it? Thank you for continuing to join me for evening devotions, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Thank you for continuing to walk with me as we are journeying through the book of Psalms. And just in case you're wondering, I'm sitting on the floor because the beautiful, bright afternoon sun is streaming in my window. And this is the only place I can get out of the brightness and actually be able to see the computer screen. So happy Monday. We are on Psalm 83. It's our last Psalm of Asaph. I think it was 70. Two or 73 is where we started and so we've had 11 psalms and these are psalms we don't know a lot about them but we know that they're connected and they point uh, there many of them most of them were have been communal psalms psalms sung prayed uh, liturgical psalms uh, words to God on behalf of a community and what we do know about this community is that they are living in difficult and chaotic times. And we hear it again in this last Psalm. Life is not good. They are surrounded on all sides. They are crying out to God for help. And probably the more uncomfortable piece of this Psalm is it's one of those Psalms, not the only, but one of them where the psalmists also cry out to God to, uh, wreak violence or vengeance on their enemies as well and enemies are many as they feel very powerless so let's hear this psalm god don't be silent don't be quiet or sit still god because look your enemies are growling those who hate you are acting arrogantly they concoct crafty plans against your own people they plot against the people you favor Come on, they say, let's wipe them out as a nation. Let the name Israel be remembered no more. They plot with a single-minded heart. They make a covenant against you. They are the clans of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagrites, Gebal, Ammon, Amalek, Philistia, along with the citizens of Tyre. Assyria, too, has joined them. They are the strong arm for Lot's children. Do to them what you did to Midian, to Sisera, and to Jabin at the Kishon River. They were destroyed at Endor. They became fertilizer for the ground. Make their officials like Oreb and Zeb, all their princes like Zeba and Zalmunna, those who said, let's take God's pastures for ourselves. My God, make them like tumbleweeds, like chaff blown by wind, just like a fire consumes a forest, just like flames set mountains ablaze. Pursue them with your storm, terrify them with your hurricane, cover their faces with shame, Lord, so they might seek your name. Let them be shamed and terrified forever. Let them die in disgrace. Let them know that you, your name is the Lord. You alone are the most high over all the earth. As you can hear, it's not necessarily a happy psalm or a psalm of praise. And you can hear, I think, the desperation in the people's voice as the psalmist cries out, take care of, and, and numerous enemies, right? One of the things I read said the listing of the enemies are geographical. And so that truly Israel is surrounded by all of these enemies and people feel powerless. And power and powerlessness are potent words for us today in our own chaotic times. It is important for us to know that there are people who are indeed very powerless, who have no control over absolutely anything that happens to them. And it would not be unusual or um, difficult to understand why they would cry out asking God to act on their behalf, asking God to perform acts of violence or vengeance for them because they have no power and no control, no ability to do it themselves, whether it is right or wrong. What we hear them is asking God 
to bring justice to them, asking God to give them justice. I think as well about what that means for us in our own chaos. I think many of us feel powerless as well today. It's a different kind of powerlessness though um, than I think the Israelites, they truly had no power, but still we feel powerless in so many ways as well, don't we? Because of the pandemic, certainly because of the politics and the political corruption that's on both sides here, um, because of just so many things going on in our world, the, the fires, the hurricanes, um, the concerns about the climate, everywhere we look, we too can feel powerless. And we are reminded that when that happens, we turn to God. We turn to God at all times, of course, but when we have no control, we can only go to the one who is in control and ask God to save us, to give us what it is that we need as well. And we too pray like the psalmist, let them know that you, your name is the Lord, you alone are most high over all the earth. And so let that be our prayer that we know even in the midst of our powerlessness and as we pray on behalf of those who have no power, we recognize that God alone has the power over all the earth. And as we trust in him and follow in his ways, he will indeed guide us and lead us to salvation, to life, to uh, glory, to love and grace once again. Have a good evening, and I will see you again tomorrow night. Thanks for joining me.